your physics teacher with me, Mr. Fernando. In this question, I'm going to show you how we can use the work kinetic energy theorem to solve questions in physics. So stay tuned. All right, in this question here, it's asking us if a 50 kilogram runner running at 3 meters per second does 45 joules of work to speed up, what is his final speed? So like I mentioned before, we're going to use the work kinetic energy theorem, but like with every question, you should always try to visualize the question first. That's going to be very helpful for you, okay? And here, let's just try to draw some grass. Maybe it doesn't really matter. It could be a end surface. And we have a runner. But as I mentioned before, one good strategy for the energy unit is you want to identify the initial conditions. So you want to put in initial and the final conditions, which occur at a later time. So we draw the runner again. Now, during this change from the initial to final, the runner did 45 joules of work from going from the initial phase to the final phase. So during this phase, 45 joules of work were done. And again, what was work? Work was the transfer of energy, so the runner had to transfer 45 joules, maybe chemical energy from the muscles, into moving energy, which was called kinetic energy. And in this case, we also are given the mass of the runner. So the mass is 50 kilograms. All right, so we have a runner, 50 kilograms are running, and then they do 45 joules of work to speed up the initial velocity of the runner, and again, that's why it's good to have initial conditions, the initial speed, vi, is three meters per second. So we could draw the vector arrow, it will be to the right, just to help remind us. And the question they're asking us, what is the final speed? The final is our unknown. Hmm. Again, there are multiple ways to answer this question, but I'm gonna show you how we can use the work kinetic energy theorem. So just as a quick recap, the work done is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy. Now, the reason why this theorem is so powerful is because we no longer need to know what are the forces acting on the runner. We don't even care. All we need to know to calculate the work done is the change in the kinetic energy, which is the change in the velocity more or less because the mass is not going to change in this one, right? So we're going to use the formula where EK, kinetic energy, is a half mv squared. So knowing this, the change in kinetic energy can be rewritten as a half mv final square minus a half mv initial square. So notice that it's a lot easier now to just calculate the final velocity because we're given the mass, we're given the initial velocity, and the work done to speed up was 45 joules of work. So we just need to try to isolate for V final in this case. So normally, most of you will plug in the numbers, but I recommend you play with the algebra. Algebra is more fun, so just give it a chance, practice it because it's gonna be helpful throughout this unit and beyond. So to isolate for V final, we're gonna move this term to the other side of the equation. So work plus a half mv initial square equals to a half mv final square. Our goal is to isolate for V final, so we need to get rid of these coefficients, one over two m. So the first thing we can do, we can multiply both sides of the equation by two. So that would be two times work plus a half mv initial square. Wait, I should be consistent. Equals to two times one over two mv final square. All right, so when you multiply by two, 
that's just gonna get rid of that one over two side, one over two from the right side. So we can simplify the right side to be just m v final square. And the left side, we expand it up. So two times w, two times one over two, that will cancel out, so it'll just be m v initial square. But we need to further simplify this equation because our, again, our goal is to isolate for v final. So you're going to divide both sides by the mass. So let's rewrite what that looks like. 2w plus m v initial square divided by m equals to v final square. And as the last step, we want to get rid of the square from the v final, so we're going to square root both sides. Right, because that's the inverse operation of squaring, we'll be taking the square root. So think of the Pythagoras theorem, right? The c squared to get rid of the c squared, you take the square root. All right, so now let's simplify our equation. So v final equals to 2 w plus m v initial square divided by m. This is all going to be square rooted. Now, if the math is giving you a hard time, be sure to subscribe to your math teacher where I'll teach you further math, and that way I can help you out so you can do your algebra much better. So at this stage, we isolate for v final. So let's just plug in the numbers. The work was 45 joules. Now, this is a good point to now think about, oh, do I have the correct units? Well, the SI units, which are the standard units, according to the French, it's going to be joules, so we're good. The mass should be in kilograms, and it is, so it's 50. Speed should be in meters per second, which it is, so 3 squared. All divided by the mass, which is 50. So let's plug this all into the calculator and see what we get. 3. 3.3 3 .3 meters per second. So did they get much faster from before? Uh, not so much. Uh, so from 3 to 3.3, 3, well at least it got faster, so you know, it makes sense. And it is a person running, so you're not going to be expecting to suddenly be moving 10 meters per second. That wouldn't be realistic, so our answer seems to make sense for the final velocity of the runner after he converted 45 joules of energy through work, his mechanical energy into, I mean chemical energy into mechanical energy. So please hit subscribe and I'm gonna show you a few more examples which are getting more challenging.